Hello and welcome back to Bum Studios. Let's bum it up. We are going to learn how to create clothes for a 3D character. Then we will import it into Unity to create an animation with working cloth physics. The first thing we will need is a 3D model. You can download one from the internet or use one from the Mixamo animation website by Adobe. I am going to create my own model using an app called Adobe Fuse. If you create your own model like I am doing here, or download one from another site, the important thing is to start with a character that is nude or has tight-fitting clothing. Once you have your model, how you like we will export it as an OBJ file. Make sure to keep your files organized. Now we can move to Mixamo with our model. You can now go to the website for Mixamo. Then import your character here with the import tab on the right side. I have already did this to save time. If you did not download or make your own character, you can download a character here to use. Again, the important thing is the character has tight fitting clothing or minimal clothing for the best results. Now we are going to find an animation that we like here. I am going to pick a simple walk animation for the demo. Great. We have our model and our animation that we want to use. The next steps involve importing the character into our clothing software called Marvelous Designer. Marvelous Designer, like many software, can be finicky. But once you get used to it, it is really an amazing piece of software. One of the biggest problems people run into is setting up the model correctly before importing it into Marvelous Designer. Here I am just downloading the walk animation from Mixamo as a basic FBX file with skin and then go into the next software I will use called Akitsu. OK, here we are in Akitsu. I was basically finished with the tutorial and made a silly mistake that ended up corrupting the whole thing. Three days work down the drain. Be careful to change your file names when saving instead of writing over the same file while editing your videos, guys. Akitsu is a little-known keyframe animation software that I absolutely love. This will not be a tutorial on Akitsu this time. Let me know if you would like one in the future. We are only going to use it this time to only to put a T-pose at the start of the animation. We need the character in a T-pose to make clothes and animate them in Marvelous Designer. You can use Blender or any number of software to do the same thing. But this is my favorite workflow for this. If you only want to make clothes for your character, you can simply select a T-pose from Mixamo and export this. My workflow here is so you can make an animation with working clothing physics in Unity or another software of your choice. If you are using Blender, or another software to set the first keyframe into a T-pose. You will probably need to export your walk animation and your T-pose animation from Mixamo in order to copy-paste a T-pose in the first frame of the animation. In order to make working clothing physics in Unity, step one will be to import our animation in Akitsu. The dragonfly symbol at the top that says Akitsu is the file menu where we will import our Mixamo FBX animation. Now our model is imported into Akitsu. Akitsu has to work flow modes, one for creating bones and adjusting skin weights, and one for animating. The hammer and bones symbol on the bottom right is where you switch between the two workflows. Click the hammer and bone symbol because we only need animation work flow mode. Mixamo sets up the model properly for rigging. You will notice a menu under the Akitsu symbol that says Animbank with three animations to T-Pose and one Mixamo Walk animation we created. If you are selecting the Mixamo animation in the Animbank, you can hit the play button on the bottom and see the walk animation. Make sure you are selecting the Mixamo animation under the Animbank. Now at the top right, you will see a menu that says Stacker. These are your keyframes. Click the number one, then click the plus sign under Stacker to create a new number one keyframe. 
At the bottom of the screen you have the animation slider, click the number 1 there to be on the first keyframe. Now you will see a menu that says Picker. Make sure you click the full human symbol under it. This will select all bones and joints. Now you will see a menu that says Transform. You will click each one and hit Delete, which will delete the keyframes for each joint. Stop before you get to the last three, because those are for scale. You should end up with a model in T-Pose. Now when you hit the play button at the bottom of the screen where the animation slider is, you should see a transition from T-Pose to the walk animation we created. When my files got corrupted, I originally had a shorter walk animation. This one we will make the transition a little longer so, when we end up in Marvelous Designer, the transition is not so quick. This will help with cloth physics when we simulate clothes to fit properly. It will make sense later. In order to make the transition slower, we go back up to the menu that says Stacker. You will see numbers beside each keyframe that represent the time between each. To the right of the two, you will change those numbers to a higher value. For me 1000 seems appropriate. Then play to test. Great. We are now done. It is time to export our animation. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I think it will help you to not mix something up if you are new to a Kitsu when exporting. Files. So we are going back to our AnimBank. Select the two T-Pose files and be careful to delete them. Then we go to the file menu under the dragonfly symbol and go to export FBX and export the scene. File at the top. Now we move to our final preparation software before going into Marvelous Designer. You can use Blender for this if you prefer, but I like 3D Studio for this step because I don't have to change the orientation of the model. 2. Make it work in Marvelous Designer. Simply go File Import Find the FBX. While importing you want to click the Animation tab and click Fill Timeline. If you do not you will only import 100 frames. Learn from my mistakes. After import you can hit play button on the bottom to test the animation and then we export it. You will choose Alembic this time as the file format. You do not need to change anything else but make sure it shows you a WG for the Alembic format. Now we can go to Marvelous Designer. Now inside Marvelous Designer, we go to File Import Alembic. Marvelous Designer has multiple modes also. The way to switch between the different options is at the top right near the Minimize button. Going back to importing the file. After choosing Alembic and finding the file, you want to make sure you are on centimeters and the DAZ. Studio settings for the import. Now we have our model. We are going to go to the animation workflow setting just to test our model. Again to change the workflow setting from Marvelous Designer. Click the simulation mode button on the top right and in the click down menu choose animation. Now in the bottom of your screen you find the timeline for our animation. You need to change one setting first before hitting play. You will see this section that says frame stepping. Click that and change it to real time. Then test the play button.
This is looking perfect. Exactly what we want. Now go back to the first frame before going to the top and switching back to simulation mode. That is where we will begin making clothes. Marvelous designer can seem daunting at first, but it really is an amazing program that you will fall in love with. I am not an expert, but I am going to try to start you off with the basics, where you can hit the ground running making, clothing designs of your own. In simulation mode, the left side is your 3D viewport, and the right side is your 2D viewport for clothing patterns. Take a few moments playing around with right click, scroll wheel. Left click act in the 3D viewport. I find it intuitive. You can change the 3D gizmo to be like Blender if preferred. On the right side in the 2D viewport, you will find you only need a few basic tools to create amazing stuff. You have a gray model for reference in the right. Start with the fourth tool over that says polygon and make a pattern for half of the model. Some basics to start. If you are making a shirt start at the neck above the shoulder, then your second point, you will click where you want your collar to end. Then make a point at the end of the arm. Then down the thickness for the sleeves back to the armpit area and down as far as you want. I am going for a dress look for this design. Just something basic for the lesson. When finished, we will click back on the starting point which will make a solid piece of fabric for us. You will notice it also created a physical piece in the 3D viewport. With our second tool over selected, which is Edit Pattern Tool, we will select the line in the center point of our model in the 2D view, Port, then right click and in the menu that opens at the bottom you will see unfold. This will mirror our design. OK now, we are going back to our second tool over, which is our edit pattern tool. With this tool selected, we will select the dot in the middle of our collar and delete it. This time, we will hold down while clicking the edit pattern tool and more options open in the list. You will see one that says edit curvature. Select this to modify the collar as appropriate. Click off the model and then back onto it to highlight it. Right click and click copy. Then paste to duplicate the back side of our dress. Drag and drop it off to the side. You will notice it appears in the 3D viewport also. Now go to the 3D viewport and try to line them up appropriately on each side of the model.
Now under the file menu at the top of the screen, you will see an arrow pointed down. This is your simulate button. We're going to click it just to test how the fabric reacts. We need to sew it together so you will see it just falls to the ground. Hit edit undo or control Z to undo and bring it back. Now we will sew it together. There are multiple sewing machines, but for now I am only using the second one over, which is called segment sewing. You can sew by either clicking on each side that needs to be sewn in the 2D viewport, or by clicking them in the 3D viewport. What you want to make sure if your sew lines are straight across. Sometimes you have to play around sewing in both viewports to see what works best. When you see the lines crossed over it is not sewn properly. Just edit undo and try again. Sometimes go from the other side than the first attempt. Or play around moving it in the 3D viewport and sewing from there instead of the 2D side. Be careful not to sew anything that should be open like the neck hole and the arm holes. There are better sewing options for the sides of a shirt but I just use the segment sewing option for everything for now until I master the basics. Here is a good example where I was struggling sewing it together in the 3D view and switched back to the 2D side to fix it. Again it seems to take some playing around unless I am doing something wrong. Now we can hit simulate, which again is the down arrow button. Oh no, it falls off, no worries. In the 2D view, click on one side, and then hold shift and click the back side, so all of it is selected. Now in the 3D viewport, you can move the whole piece up a little, click simulate and try again. Great, if you got this far, you are a rock star. If you have any issues while in simulation mode, you can click on the clothes on the model, which pinches them and drag to pull them and adjust the look. Or if you have an area coming through to fix it. Now you are going to notice the back is gray. Right click on it and in the list you will see flip normals and that will fix it. Now we are going to switch to the animation workflow mode. In animation mode this time, instead of clicking play, we are going to click the symbol that looks like a camcorder and click it, which will record out the animation. Let it finish all the way until the animation stops.
Once your animation stops, you are going to save the file by going to File Export Alembic. Make sure you only select the O, G, Hey, W, Hey version of Alembic Export. When the Alembic Export screen opens, you can keep everything the same, except make sure the Include Avatar Shape is checked. If not, you will only export the clothing animation. Now we will head over to Unity Game Engine. In order to import our animation into Unity, you need to go to Windows, then the scroll down to Package Manager. In the package manager under the registry, you are going to look for Alembic. You will download it and install. I already have it in my project. All this does is allow you to import Alembic file. Now you can find your final animation and import it into Unity. Place your model into your scene. Position and size it as needed. Click on your model under the hierarchy and add an animator component. You don't need to assign an avatar, but you do need an animation controller. You can use an existing one if your project if you want, or create a new one by right click then hit create, then animation controller, and name it what you want. Click on your animation in the hierarchy again and drag and drop your animation controller you just made. Click on your animator tab. If you don't have it open go to window, then click animation, then animator in order to open it. We need to add the animation we made to the animator tab at top. To find our animation, we go to our character in our project. You will notice there is an arrow off to the right side of the character. Click on it and expand it open. You will see the animation at the end. I don't know why the active animation is always the last one. Drag and drop it up to the animator. I like to copy and duplicate it and make a transition back and forth to make the animation repeat. Now add textures as per your normal procedure and you're done. 